Welcome to our Brothers in Conversation podcast, powered by Jesse and Shondell. Shondell, you are from? That's not do or die Brooklyn, that little town. That's a little town. That's nothing like Hawthorne, Nevada. Population 5,000 cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our Conversations Podcast. This is powered by Jesse and... Shondell Newsom. There it is. This is May 2nd, 2019, Episode 3. And oh. our title, Shondell, which is a really good one for everybody, definitely for us, oh, yeah. is, is going to be the number one reason small businesses fall, or no, sorry, the number one re- reason why small businesses fail and, and how to avoid, and, yeah. they, and they do fall. Yeah. We're going to talk about number one, why they... We're going to talk about the number one reason, and we're going to talk about other reasons why right. businesses fail, not just the number one. Yeah. And, and then we're going to also talk about how to avoid it. Uh, so uh, what's cool is next week is National Small Business Week. Yeah. So this Big is a week. great topic right now. This is those of you that are out there listening, whether you're in small business or not, or even if you're in big business... It doesn't matter, even if you're not in business, because typically someone that you're related to is in business, and so it's it's all going to apply. Yep. So I like to go organic with you. In fact, let me. Turn. And I'm starting the watch party, so a lot of people are going to join in. Okay, this. good. So you I got to make sure. Let me turn it down. Huh? You got the watch party going. I'm on the watch there. party going so that my uh, viewers can check us out and, and see what's going on. So I got a few people that are already sent. Odd Cynthia. James Edmond, nice. and let's see, Maria, I think it's Maru, Gonzalez Garcia, everybody's joined, so that's good. Well, I, you know, and every now and then, let's tap in and see who else is there, if you want to yeah. say something with them or whatever, I Absolutely. highly encourage that. Absolutely. I think, you know, Shondell, a good place for us to start it was, it was, is with a little bit of statistical stuff. Yeah, then we're going to go organic like we always right do. On. We'll bounce back and forth. There you go. So this is, um, again, the number one reason businesses fail is 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 a two- uh, two four-letter words. Okay. Cash flow. Okay. This is the number one reason business cash fail flow. is cash flow. Right. Two four-letter words. Right. Right? Right. Then it says, according to Investopedia, the four most common reasons why small businesses fail are lack of sufficient capital, poor management, inadequate business planning, yep. and overblowing their marketing budgets, cash flow problems. 42% of small businesses fail because there's no market so, so need. So let's talk, let's talk about what cash flow is, right? And, and what's interesting is um, when you ask an accountant, they think it's about how the cash is managed okay. throughout the <clears throat> business and things like that. Me, as a person who has been in business for over a decade, I will tell you that one of the challenges, one of the biggest challenges I see with small businesses sure. is the fact that, one, they don't know how to attract customers, they don't know how to keep old customers or retain current customers. When you say track customers, what do you mean by they don't know how to track attract, customers? Or attract. Oh, okay, attract. good. Okay, good. They, Got they, it. They don't know how to attract new customers because they don't know who they want to attract. They haven't. They haven't made a specific target and said, exactly. "This is my." You know what? Yeah, Funny you should say that. Funny you should say that. Let me tell you about that issue. That's good that you bring that up because yep. check this out. Yeah. For many, many years, and I think this, I think a lot of people listening to this, mm-hmm. and maybe not you or maybe you, <clears throat> may have found themselves in the same uh, predicament. Yeah. I think a lot of times we try to be too much to too many in, in, in an effort to still be in business. I made a mistake myself for yeah. many, yeah. many years. Yeah. Do you know it is just this year mm-hmm. that we are now... We have now chosen our avatar client, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we are going for a specific target range. Right. I think too many years I tried to be too much for too many, sure. and I did that. What what I felt it was like, sure. Uh, to, because the more I could do, the more I could serve. Right. No, no, that's it's the actually the opposite to your. Point. It is not. You know what? Because you're feeling like you're going to miss something. If if I if I'm not available, correct. To everyone, correct. Miss something. Correct. But what's important for people to understand is that. For example, when I worked at Station Casinos, and, and you know, me, you and I both talk sure. about our hospitality and gaming love careers, it. right? The thing that I loved is we were focused on locals. We were focused on a market. Right. We were focused on a niche. Right. And I never forget that there was a casino host that came to work for me, and he wanted to bring all of his star heavy hitter, like Charles Because Barkley, they were big money, yeah. Because they were big money. Right. And he was saying, well, at, you know, just imagine... One Charles Barkley will make up for thousands of local customers. I said, but the problem is, is that's a one hit. These thousands of customers are three times a week. 
totally different market, totally different attitude. We the the more you focus on your customer or your you, niche, your niche, right? You we have win. got to establish our niche, yes. And then you need to do what? You need to become in the top five percent. Yeah. In terms of your acumen and your strategies and your mm-hmm. style and your delivery and your service in that niche, yes. stop trying to be too much for everybody. Absolutely. Go back to your Charles Barkley example. In fact, I actually met him and, and I spent some well, time with him funny too. Is, you know, Charles Barkley is a, is a big you know he's a big gambler, but for him to come to a local casino, one is gonna you're gonna t- it's gonna take a lot for you to get him there. Where you already have these that if you want to compare him to a hundred local customers. Those folks are already there. Well, he may likely come there if the if your relationship with him is strong enough. You mm-hmm. can get him to come. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that's his place. Exactly. Charles Barkley really likely deserves at a Caesars Entertainment yes. at an MGM Resorts International because yes. it's a bigger profile and yep. they got bigger platforms yep. and they're and there are more people like him yep. in those places. And let's just go back to this. As human beings, in order to lower our stress levels. Mm-hmm. What, we, what we're functioning by is survival. Right. What, what is survival? Survival is eat yep. to survive, yep. avoid eating by the predator, yep. get a job, build a business, whatever, yep. and sex for procreation. Mm-hmm. The thing that lowers our stress more than anything else is that we are herd mm-hmm. animals, mm-hmm. Uh, flocks of geese, yep. uh, schools of fish, yep. religious communities, uh, ethnic communities. Yep. Uh, so when we are in the, our community, mm-hmm. it lowers our stress. The dopamine serotonin gets balanced out. So yes. Charles Barkley is much better in his element at Caesars or MGM Resorts International than he is at Palace Station. Right. Nothing yeah. wrong with Palace Station. Exactly. There's, There's nothing niche, wrong with it. Right? Right? But to your point, yeah. when you guys focus on locals, what you've built is an infrastructure that serves locals. Exactly. Not You don't have all the high-profile restaurants there. Exactly. You don't have all the uh, five or six big name shows in yeah. one place. Yeah. Right? You're giving you're giving them what they want. Exactly. Right? You're you're focused so much on the niche that you are giving them exactly what they're asking for. Absolutely. You're, you're not you're not you you don't have to create it. and guess what? After over a period of time it becomes habit. It so does. You walk in and those folks are there because it has become habit. And that habit is what brings, what lowers their stress levels, raises their entertainment value. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, Charles Barkley, even if you, even if you have a superb relationship with him and you can get him there, he's likely not going to stay there, keep coming because it's like it's like it doesn't really fit. It doesn't fit, and that's not it. That's not his place. And that's the point when you yeah. talk about attracting customers. So exactly, how should people that are in business, regardless of the name of their business or what their business is, how should they be attracting? New eyeballs. So you first, tell me. first and foremost, they have to understand what they provide. What value do you provide? Because value is in the eye of the beholder. And I always use a scripture is Philippians 2, 3, and 4 is, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Put others above yourself. So that is how you attract the customer. Put others above, above yourself. yourself. Is that anything it. like... How you leave them feeling. Oh, yeah. And treat, treat others how they want to be treated, exactly. not how you want to be treated. Right. That, 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 that's the exactly. parallels there. Okay. Yes, it parallels perfectly because what, what, what people want to do is it, it goes back to what we always say. People want to feel good. They do. That there's no don't don't get don't get caught up in the hype of um, in marketing. People get hype, get hyped up about the imagery and all of that. Right. The imagery only works if somebody has an emotion about it. Uh, that's right. If because, somebody feels yeah, about it. Right? That's right. It is all about. And that's how that's how we met, because that when is. I saw your book and I saw what you were talking about. Understand that when I when I say when I talk about the 12 steps of marketing. Right. I am talking about you getting an emotion from a person. And emotions last longer. Absolutely. Than anything else. They're more sustainable. They're more sustainable. And they leave a bigger mark. Yes. Because it's almost like the quote, and uh, my Angelo gets credit for the quote, but mm-hmm. people may not always remember what you've done, but they'll always remember how you left them feeling. Right. Or how you, she says, how you made them feel. How you made them feel. And exactly. so it's what is, it's how you make them feel right. is what they retain to exactly. your point, emotion. Right. Not what you've done for them. Because what are sports, right? When, 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 when you go to a game, and somebody hits a historic home run. Yeah. You remember where you were at that time because of the emotion. Yeah. It was like the elation, the the feeling. And of, it'll come all back to you just like it happened back. yesterday. Exactly. Interesting you said that because when I was in corporate America, when I was leaving corporate America, this concept that you're saying, I didn't know how on track I was with mm-hmm. the contract. We're going to get back to attracting customers yeah. too. But 
that can be a bit of a competitive industry, mm-hmm. and it's and it's a monkey see monkey do industry. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of um, jealousy and insecurity yeah. in the industry. Yeah. And what I did not want was for all those people that I worked with for all those years mm-hmm. to harbor jealousy or envy because I got in their perspective, I got out. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So I thought, what can I do? And I thought, you know what? First thing is I don't want anybody to know that I'm leaving until I'm gone. Right. So I'm, I let I asked the president at the at the time of the of the Rio. It was Gary Celestner. Yes. Uh, he's over at Caesars now. Mm-hmm. He's the president of Caesars now. I asked him to please not tell anybody that I'm leaving until after I'm gone because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I want to work all the way up to that point. Right. But then I, I bought this little um, at the time um, karaoke was big at the mm-hmm. time. So I bought this karaoke machine. It cost about three four hundred bucks mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. That's almost twenty years ago. Right. And I bought this at the time. PDAs were popular at yeah, the time, so I got this yeah, handheld PDA. Yes, they were about four hundred bucks too, yeah, four five hundred bucks. Stylus stick. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I bought those two items, and yeah. at the next marketing meeting, because I was a marketing executive, yeah. I gave those to my vice president of marketing, and I, and I gave him a, enough raffle tickets for everybody in the room. Right. I said, at the end of the meeting, I want you to raffle this off to my team that I'm leaving. Uh huh. And I want you to tell them that I appreciate them allowing me to have the opportunity to work with them. Right, right. Think about that. Yeah. Why did I do that? Well, I mean, because you knew that by showing appreciation, people yep. will never forget and you'll make them feel special. Right. And you'll, 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 more so, you'll make them feel appreciated. And I really meant it. And so mm-hmm. now when I come back into the Rio, mm-hmm. I don't want any crap. Right. Because I'm not no longer one of you. No, no, yeah. And I registered as an independent agent, so I would have to come back at times because even though I wasn't working inside and I was working on building this business, Mm -hmm. the Just Talk Speaking and Coaching Firm business, I still had a leg in, so I did not want to be disenfranchised because of resentment. Right. So my point is, back to you, is that emotion that I was striking with them was sincere, and I really did. I wanted to do something I was really sincere about, Mm -hmm. and you know what? I was always welcomed by every one of those guys whenever I came back on property. Yeah, because, you know, it's all about how you made them feel, and you made them feel special. You made them feel appreciated. People don't forget how you make them feel. No, and guess what? I'm leaving. That's my. I'm walking Mm -hmm. out the door. I'm not coming back. Right. Right. I, you do something. But, you know, what happens with small business owners and, and you know, I know National Small Business Week is next week. And if I could give any advice to small business owners is get over yourself. Right. Because oh, I say that, that all was, the time. That was I a, say that all the time. That was a great selfless. I say act, that all the right? time. Yeah. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. And, and if you if you want to attract customers. Make it all about them. Yeah. You know, it's so cool about your get over yourself concept that you just said. Uh, we, Lisa and I are certified in color code. Color mm-hmm. code is a personality assessment. Mm-hmm. And real quickly, we overlay the game of baseball, which is because you're a great athlete. You mm-hmm. get this. We take the game of baseball and we use that analogy to overlay mm-hmm. in terms of the concept of the color code. Right. When you take the color code, you're in the game. Yeah. And the and whole point in, in the game of baseball is to do score what? Score runs. How, how do you win the game? Right. How do you win the game? Yeah, you score runs. You got to score more runs than the You got to score more runs than the other team. Yeah. So, so when you take the code, you get your assessment and it gives you your strengths, your mm-hmm. limitations, mm-hmm. your wants, and your needs. Right. Okay. And it lets you understand. This is also psychographics, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Yeah. But in order to win the game, mm-hmm. you got to get on base. Mm-hmm. So in color code, it says getting to first base, that's you getting yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to get who, who is Shondell? Right. What are your wants, your needs? What are your strengths, your, your limitations? What's holding you back in terms of your communication style and all that? That's getting to first base. Mm-hmm. To get to second base, you got to do something about those limitations yeah. to get rid of them, right? Yeah. Raise those strengths. Mm-hmm. To get to third base, it's exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. Get over yourself. Get over yourself, right. Getting to third base is getting over yourself and realize it's not all about you. Learn to speak the language of others. Yeah. That's getting over yourself. Now, yeah. when you score... Who are you scoring for? When you score, when you cross home play, who are you scoring for? Yeah, you're scoring for others. You're scoring for others. You're scoring right. for the team. Yeah, for the team. So guess what? We're wrong. That's proven you and get over you yourself, win. and that's how you win. Yeah, come that's on. That's how you win, yeah. And that's what, I think that's the small businesses, because it, what does it say here? It says 42% of small businesses fail because there's no market need for their service or products. What's interesting is I wouldn't say there's no market need all of the time. I would say that they haven't identified. Right, the right market because they have not gotten over themselves. 
I can tell you something that's going to shock you. I totally agree with you. Guess what? It's not on our stats on our paper, but I read it somewhere yeah. when we were preparing for this. 99.7% of businesses in the U.S. are small businesses. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew that. I didn't. That blew me away. Yeah, and, and 99.7. Yeah. So if they haven't gotten over themselves, they're destined for what? Failure. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. No <laughs> doubt about it. And Because you, you, you have to understand that um, a small business was designed, small businesses were designed to serve people. That's right. That's that's the basic premise. I'm so glad you said that all businesses are assigned. Lisa's got a note for us here. Let's see. Okay, thank you. You're too far away. You can't hear you. you can hear Come on you. in. I feel like we're screaming. <laughs> yeah. When you move, it goes in and out. Okay, Lisa says, I got to yeah, get you closer got, to the mic. You got you to gotta, you gotta feel Man. the mic, brother. Man, I was feeling it from back yeah. here, too. Okay, so. <laughs> Derek, who? Derek Elliott. Oh, Derek Elliott. Lisa, Lisa is in the back. She's got some other things doing on special assignment. She's on it. But she just she just mentioned that Derek Elliott is on the line. Derek yeah. Elliott. Did, did, I, and let, let's we'll get back to that point because you, mm-hmm. you you raised some really good points. Where mm-hmm. were we at before I get on to Derek Elliott? Well, uh, we were talking about the failure of small businesses. So go. Ahead. But you were saying something about why they fail because they don't get over themselves. Yeah, they don't get over themselves, and like you said, you the ninety seven point or ninety nine point seven percent are small businesses. Which boom, that yeah. I didn't know that number was that oh, big. Yeah. That's a big number. Small businesses are the largest employers in the U.S. Exactly. So we're yeah. talking about we're talking about being able to get over yourself and making sure it's not all about you. Right. Um, I don't want to lose that thought, but Derek Kelly, he actually when I left corporate America, oddly enough, mm-hmm. he was he was the first person that I showed. Back then when websites were a big deal before uh, five-year-olds could build their own websites right, right. back in the day. Yeah. And, and, and he became, he said, I'm going to become your largest customer mm-hmm. because of what he saw on that one page. Right. And he became our largest customer for many years. Nice. Derek Elias out of Canada, mm-hmm. out of the eastern port of uh, Canada. Where, where, where? Um, Toronto? Uh, no, you could fly into Toronto, Orangeville. I almost okay. dropped, I haven't said that in so long. Orangeville, Canada yeah. is where he's from, which is about an hour from Toronto. Oh, yeah, I know where it is. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I and, spend a lot of time in Vermont, so Derby Line is right on the border of Canada. Yeah, and he was a superb customer. I got yeah. to serve him, uh, the president. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the president at the time, mm-hmm. uh, the founding father. Mm-hmm. Got to serve all his executives and got to go to the Dominican Republic, nice. where they had uh, resorts yeah. and served the resorts. Blah blah blah, that sort of stuff. But yeah, very nice. But but getting back to numbers. So thank you, uh, Derek Elliott, for tuning in because this, this is cool. Yeah. So getting back to the part about we're on a flow about um, it's not all about you, right? And you've got to get over yourself yeah. to be able to serve. And and the number one people think when you ask people why they're in business, Shondell. Mm-hmm. Most people, when you ask them, not Shondell, try to step away from your knowledge. Oh, yeah. When, what do you think most people answer, Shondell, when you say they're in business to do what? Why are they in business to do what? I'm, to- in, I'm in business because I want to be my own boss. That's I'm one. I'm in business because I want independence. I'm in business because I want to make a lot of money. That The, the right. third thing you said is usually the first thing people the, say, but yeah. you said it. Well, I, I get them all. <clears throat> and, you know, just being... Um, you know, at the Urban Chamber a lot. And then also people come and call me for advice when they start their business. The first thing when they say is I'm in business to make money. Yeah. I tell them, please make sure that that's not the reason you're in business. Because if it's if you're in business just to make money, mm-hmm. you're likely going to fail yes. sooner rather than yes. later. Yeah. The number one reason, in my opinion, to be in business, and you said it early, mm-hmm. is to serve a client. To yes. serve. Serve. Yes. And Guy Kawasaki from the Macintosh division of Apple in the early days, he, he does a lot of public speaking. He says, make meaning and then you'll make money. But if you oh. want to make money, you will never make meaning and you will never make money. You just gave me the chili bumps. Say that one more time. Make meaning. Make meaning and then you'll make money. Okay. If you set out to make money, you won't make meaning and you won't make money. Okay, check this out. This past weekend, I spent some time with my baby brother, Tony. Mm -hmm. I don't get to spend a lot of time with him. Cool. He's been talking about getting his own business for a long time, and he really, really wants to do that. Yeah. And when I asked him questions about it, Mm -hmm. I said, uh, because he's talking about maybe a tenant, he wanted me to be talking about jeans and maybe Mm -hmm. T-shirts or Mm -hmm. whatever. Nothing wrong with that, although the the market is definitely flooded with that. Right, right. Nothing wrong with that. I said to him, I said, what is your signature brand? Yeah. He said, hmm? Right. I said, what's your signature brand? Right. 
He said, well, what is that? <laughs> so I helped him understand what a signature brand is. Okay. And I said, now do you know what it is? He says, no, I don't. Right. I said, you want to establish your signature brand right. first. Right. I said, what are your best gifts and talents? Right. He said, I'm not really sure. Wow. I said, okay. Do not lose your energy on wanting to own or start your own business. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Right. I said, but put it in a... Let me go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. You need to grab. No, I said, going. put it in the pocket over here. And I said this, still pursue that. Right. I said, but first establish what your best strengths and talents are. Right. And your best gifts and talents. Right. Preferably your calling and your purpose. Yep. Yep. Then determine what is your signature brand. What do you stand for? What do you want to stand for? Check this out. You know why, Shondell? What? Because if you know what your best strengths and talents mm-hmm. are or best gifts and talents, mm-hmm. and if you know what your signature brand is, yep. when you go into sell into a business to infuse that into the business. Yes. When it gets tough, what do you typically do? If that's your signature brand and that's yeah. your calling your gift, what do you do? Yeah, you, you fall right back to it. Yeah, you yeah. dig in. You, you dig in. But if, if you're just selling a product to sell a product and Nothing things happens. get tough, what no do people feelings. do? No feelings. And, 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 you know, it still goes back to how you make them feel. It right? does. So, so when, you, when you gave me, this, this, is, this is the book that I, I, I wrote for... The 12 Steps of Marketing, right? Oh, nice. The 12 right? Steps of Marketing. 12 Steps of Marketing. The perfect, perfect guide, guide to, branding. to branding. Oh, there we go. Right? Oh, nice. So what you're talking about to your brother is the first thing you have to understand is your own DNA. Nice. You have to know. Nice. What are you good at? What are you great at? What do you do organically and naturally to serve other people? Nice. What do you do naturally, right? Just we, from day one when we talked, you talked about, hey, you talked about how you serve and help people through coaching. Yeah, and when people and guess what, Jess, you're good at it and you enjoy it. I love it. You, you know what? Love it. I, listen, right? I, I yeah, it, it's it's it comes from such an innate place. It is it, it's a power that's beyond me. Yeah. I do love it, and you love it. And by the, and check this out. By the way, I want to keep getting better at it. That, but see, that's I my still point. want to keep getting better but at see, it. That's my point. The greatest athletes in the world, the Magic Johnsons, yeah. the Michael Jordans, they wanted to always go to a different level. I want they, to be in a different level. They wanted to be there. See, the problem that we face, those those percentage, those 42 percent of small businesses that fail. Most of those people don't have that because they're not connected to that. They got into business for other reasons, right? They got into business because it looked nice. They got into business. It It sounded attractive. It sounded attractive. Or they knew someone that was in it and it was good for them. Yeah. Oh, then I'm going to do that. And guess what, Jess? I'm teaching a class in Latin. You know, I told you, at least I'm teaching a class um, every Wednesday night for the next. Now we're down to, let's see, we're week eight yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's called Next Level for Entrepreneurs. In this business, um, and, and with, with talking to those folks, the big thing that they're learning is they are learning that they were not as prepared as they should have been. As the right, and they're telling me that they're like, ah, "Wow, Shondell, you're opening, you're opening so many doors. You're you're opening my mind." And as a matter of fact, you're a guest speaker coming up soon. Right? Yes, you're going to be speaking to that class. Yes, these folks come in wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. They think I'm going to give them the secret sauce. Yes. I'm walking them through the grind. <laughs> right? That is the I'm secret in, sauce. That's, it, that's the secret sauce. I'm bringing in guest speakers like you who can speak real to them. Yeah, and, right? if, you, and if you want to grow through it, you've got to go through yes, it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you want to grow through you got to go through If you don't go through it, it's not like I was happen. talking to my baby brother, yeah. if he doesn't go through it, he will not grow through it. Yes, yes. You've got to go through it, and, and you got to start at the basic foundational level. Level, you and gotta, you got to know that adversity is inevitable. Absolutely. Guess what? <laughs> Every day. Every single we just, day. You, oh, my God. Let me flip it. I'm going to come back to your book in a sec. You said adversity. I got chili bumps when you said that. We've been with our, our credit card pro- processing company. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rough it out. Roughly for about um, 10 or 11, maybe 12 years. And we just switched because our, the, the feeds got to be ridiculous. And the new company, mm-hmm. you talk about adversity. Yeah. I was so excited about this new company, and the new company. I heard a little switch over there, but yeah, we're still we're still up. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the new company, yesterday we went to charge credit cards. The first credit card we couldn't charge. Mm. We figured out we had to call in for support and help and blah 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 blah. Uh, they didn't turn on a switch so we could charge our international clients. Oh, so it was wow. a Canadian client. Oh, that's God. not on us. That's yeah. on you. Right, right. I already told you what our business is. Yeah. So you you know anyway. So we missed that. 
The second one, we couldn't charge. Mm. We charged it three times at decline. Mm. I felt the card was good. Yeah. I, my intuition said, this card is good. Right. Something's wrong here. So yeah. we backed off. We, went, we got a couple charges in. We went back and charged again. Mm. It didn't charge. Right. I reached out to the customer. Now, you already said it. Did You never said that I was a bill collector, did you? Right. See, because I'm not. Right, right, right. Pro- professional speaker, life coach, executive coach. Yeah. I'm not in the bill collecting. Don't right. make me hound my clients for money. Right, right. It's not why I'm in it. Yeah. And it's embarrassing. Yeah. We chapter, the client says, no, that client, that card's good. Mm-hmm. Now I'm bothering the client on their work day. Yep. Go back, try to charge it again. Yeah. Guess what happened, Shondell? Didn't char- didn't it didn't charge. It didn't charge. Wow. Another client, huge client, would not charge. Wow. And I, and now I, I spent, typically it takes me 20 minutes mm-hmm. with our accountant to mm-hmm. proce- process credit cards. Mm-hmm. Four and a half hours. Oh, time. Didn't you say adversity? Yeah. Adversity is inevitable. It's Come on. Happen. Chanel. Yeah. Yeah. So then I thought, well, let me go back. To, I didn't abandon our old system yet. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Ch- put the credit card in. Charge, no problem. No problem. But the second card in, charge, no problem. Yep. That- you, now, but now the adversity came wasn't when, when it didn't charge. That wasn't the adversity. Guess what the adversity was? You had to call your client, talk to them. That wasn't the inverse. That was challenging. Guess what right. the adversity was? What? The new company that we signed on to, they don't care that I couldn't charge the car. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, so, so that, and that's, you know, that's one of the core values that we have is caring. But, but Shondell, yeah. they're my new system. It's my first day. Right. This card is live. I don't tell them right away that I could get a charge on the old system, on mm-hmm. another system that's mm-hmm. not theirs. Mm-hmm. When I tell them that, guess what he says? What? Nothing. I had to tell him four times. I said, I need you to acknowledge that you're hearing me tell you that it got charged on another system that's not yours. So there's nothing wrong with my client's card. Right. What's wrong with your system? Right. And they, and they didn't care. He, he said, well, I, you, you know, if you want, I could think about maybe uh, escalating. If I want, right? How, dude, that's why we came to you, because yeah. we're frustrated with the old company. Right. That's an adversity t- thing that's yeah. live. I wanted to sh- share that with you. What do well, you yeah. think about that in terms of adversity? Well, you know, it, like, you, like you said, it comes down to everything comes back to experience and it comes back to feeling. Because what most people don't realize when I talk about branding and when I talk about marketing, I'm talking about the whole process. Yes. I'm not just talking about how you communicate, how you show your logos and colors. I'm talking about how you go through that whole... So they, they, they you, you started working with this credit card company. The new one. How did they leave right? me feeling? It, very bad. And so... Four and a half hours of out of problem. my day? Right. So what's your image? Your, your image of them is inept... Oh, right. Just you just got all bad images about that credit card company. I even reached out to the guy that sold it to me. He mm-hmm. didn't have time for me and didn't call me back. So there you go. So your Im- so your image of that company now is all negative. And that's what I tell people all the time. You see, so going back to again, why do small businesses fail? Because they can't attract or retain. Thank you. Customers. Thank you. And right. you say here, I just flipped to a page here, uh, page 59. I just flipped to it. It <laughs> says sales promotion is the spark that lights the fuse for salespeople to blow up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that again. Sales promotion is the spark that lights the fuse for salespeople to blow up. Now, you know this because you wrote it, but they don't know it. So I want to read just this little paragraph here. <laughs> the best salesman or saleswoman will tell you that they are the best thing th- since sliced bread. I hear it all the time. Right. They can sell ice to an Eskimo in the middle of Alaska during the winter. They can sell the devil a heater. But but I will tell you that they are only as good as the sales promotion that accompanies the final pitch. Here is the truth about sales. The customer needs the customer needs some prompting to build up the desire to purchase an item. Let me let me make it plain to you. A potential buyer may need a car. The salesperson is not going to get the customer to come to the dealership. In fact, when they get to the dealership, the first response is, oh, my God, I have to walk through those sharks. It's so true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. so break down that little paragraph where we talk about 
the sales promotion is the spark that lights the fuse for sales people yes. to blow up. This is from Shondell's book, The 12 Steps, 12 Steps of Marketing, A Perfect Guide to Branding. Yeah. So, you know, I always tell salespeople that in order for them to be great at sales, they have to learn how to market. They have to understand that when pe- the, the best thing that would happen for them is when a person shows up to a car dealership, they are looking for you. Yeah. And you know exactly what they need and what they want. Guess what happens? You spend less time trying to sell them and you spend more time trying to address their need. Right. And when you address their need, you get them in a place where they're very comfortable quickly. Absolutely. And they sign signing documents. They walk out the door happy. And then you can get on to the next customer. Absolutely. You and you're serving. And you're serving. Wow. What I see from most car dealers or, car, or people who are car salesmen, they, they spend too much time trying to convince people as opposed to addressing their needs. You're trying to convince them to buy, purchase versus addressing their need where, one, when you address their need, they will say to their family and friends, this person looked out for me. Wow. When you sell them something, they're going to think you're a jerk because you're trying to give them something right. they may not necessarily want or need. That's right. That's right. right. Well said. So so that's why I, just, that I try to get salespeople to understand how marketing plays Marketing and sales promotion plays a key role in their success. It's huge. Mm-hmm. It's huge. And and that whole that whole piece about, you know, that emotional piece that you brought up earlier, that's the tie in. But mm-hmm. we, we have to don't just reach them emotionally, reach them emotionally where it matters most to them. Exactly. If your product is not a good fit for someone, mm-hmm. don't try to shove it down their throat. Don't it's not gonna last long, even if you get the sell. Right. Right. It's got to be a. It's got to be a fit for both sides. Uh, and so, f- funny you should say that. So I want to. There are a couple uh, pieces that I want to read here, mm-hmm. Shondell, about some of the folks. And these, this, these are. This doesn't. These are not just small businesses. These are big businesses. Yeah, but yeah. I, but yeah. I want to shuffle this in because I found this very fascinating. But I think that small businesses have to have the behaviors of big businesses in order to be. Thank successful. you. But yeah, you, they have to have the, the behaviors. Success. That's big well business. said. Yeah. Because if they don't, they're going to fail too. Plus, Absolutely. they also want the people that they're serving to feel like they're credible, that yes. they're quality. Yes. But here's a business called Kodak. You ever hear of a business called yep. Kodak? I'm just going to read here. I want you to respond from this. It's a mm-hmm. short paragraph. Uh, let's see, Kodak. Kodak, a technology company that dominated the f- uh, photographic film market during most of the 20th century. Mm-hmm. The company blew its chance to lead the digital photography revolution as they were in denial for too long. Mm-hmm. We're talking about denial here. Mm-hmm. Steve Sasson, the Kodak engineer, actually invented the first digital camera back in 1975. Mm-hmm. Take a look at this. Mm-hmm. But it was f- it was... Filmless photography. So management's reaction was, that's cute, but don't tell anyone about it, says Sasson. The leaders of Kodak failed to see digital photography as a disruptive technology. A former VP of Kodak, Don Strickland, says, We developed the world's first consumer digital camera, but we we could not get approval to launch or sell it because of fear of the effects on the film market. Mm -hmm. The management was so focused on the film success that they missed the digital revolution after starting it. Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012. The Kodak failure surprised many. You know what happens? Can you imagine? Of course, because you're not paying, again, you're not paying attention to the market. You've got to pay attention to the market. Mm -hmm. I'm getting chills now. So speaking of Kodak and what you just said, Shondell Ball, paying attention to the market, you're expert in this? Yes. And just because you're good at some things doesn't mean you're good at all things. Exactly, exactly. Do you know this year is the first year we start? Because I used to say, well, I'm not in competition with anybody else. I'm only in competition with myself. That's nice. Right, right. That's nice that I don't see other competitors, Mm -hmm. but but they really are out there. Mm That's 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 a feel good thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that means I'm not looking at the market. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm focused here. Yeah. That's the wrong focus. Right. So we looked out, and I thought, you know what? This online course thing is mm-hmm. something that's huge. Mm-hmm. We need to start designing our own sure. online course stuff. Not to be with everybody else, not just design a course. You know why? It's a $366 billion industry Absolutely. that I've been standing on the sidelines for. Sure. And I could further grow the company, mm-hmm. further design the company, and not become a Kodak. Right. By having online products, you know why? Because people are seeking those. Yes. I don't need to be in front of audiences all the time right. to make my mark or to serve. Right. 
And so the Breakthrough Success Plan, mm-hmm. it's ju- we just finished filming all nine modules. Mm-hmm. It's just now starting to hit the market. Right. And it's designed, get this, it's something we've been doing all our lives. Yeah. But now we packaged it. Yeah. It's designed for those those people that are in either corporate America or mm-hmm. in a business, mm-hmm. and they want to go to the next level. Sure. How do they prepare for that? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you this, is that, um, that Kodak faced it, but also... Um, um, Apple almost. Uh, oh, he sure did. Huge That's mistake, right. Right. When they, they got, got rid of Jobs. Too, That's when right. They got rid of Jobs. Yep. The job was talking about the Mac. Yep. And, and and they did the same thing. They almost. They, they were almost this did. close to being out of business. Yeah, they were that close. You're absolutely right. And, and so that's why you know when when you talk about like. Uh, evolving and, and moving with technology. That's what my daughter did a few years ago. She mm-hmm. created the Some New Solution Zone. And that's an online platform where she took the 12 steps of marketing okay. and she put it in digital, and I mean, not digital, on online okay. so that people can now engage with me online. Right. And, and what's interesting which, is... Which, which, it, which they get to engage with you online exactly. when it's right for them. Right. Not just when it's right for Shondell exactly Newsom. Exactly, right. The online course, the Breakthrough Success Plan, yeah. allows them to go at their own pace and they Same. can engage. Yep. Plus, there's a weekly component yep. that we created a strategy mm-hmm. call for everybody that has bought that program can mm-hmm. be online once a week, mm-hmm. connecting with the experts mm-hmm. and so forth. But they can they can be online or they don't have to. They and can do it when they want, want to, to. Exactly. not just when we want to. They yep. can do it when it's right for them, yeah. not when it's just right for us. Yeah, a few years ago, that's what my daughter said. She said, you've done many classes in the classroom. You've done radio. You've done workshops. You've flown to other cities. You've helped a lot of people through the 12 steps of marketing. She said, but let me put you online so that you can Brilliant. do the same thing. People can connect on their pace right. whenever they need to. I've, I've, I've filmed all modules two couple of years ago. Okay. Um, it's online. Everybody can go at their own pace. That's so huge. Cool, right? Yeah, it's a and, much better offering. For, but you are responding mm-hmm. to the time versus reacting when it's too late. Exactly. What's the difference between reacting and responding in your mind? Well, reacting is, you know, reacting and responding. So reacting is when you're late to the party. Yes. That's what I said. <laughs> yes. Responding is you're right on time and you're addressing the need when it's when it when it's at its peak. Yes, you've and, got yes. Mm-hmm. So you've got a perfect synergy of yeah. things going. Exactly. So, yeah. A lot and, and 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 it's tough for I gotta admit it's tough for small businesses. That's why I always encourage them to reach out to other Shondell, people. Shondell, it's tough for all businesses. Yeah. yeah. It's well, remember, look at MGM look at MGM right? Resorts yeah. International. Yeah. They're, 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 they're going to lay off a million dollars worth of what they would have been paying out in salaries right. and, and, and so forth right now. Right. I mean, they're, they're challenged right now. Yes, you're right. Small businesses, I think, have it even more so because they typically have less resources. Exactly. And the small business owner is less sophisticated typically as an MGM, right? Yes. MG, MGM and MGM. And Caesars Entertainment Caesar's going through the same thing, right? too. Those corporations have a lot of resources, and, and in most cases, well, they're responding to the shareholders because shareholders Correct. are saying, "Hey, you know what? We have to cut costs. We have to cut this because we need to. That's we why need, we. That's we, why we need we're to make here, a profit. To make that's right. Profit. That's right. Um, small business owners have a different issue. One, they don't have they don't have the flexibility, nor do they have. The, the, the bandwidth to take those type of lumps, right? They also don't typically have the time. Right. And that's right. kind of part of your bandwidth concern yeah. too, right? Yeah, the issue is, and when you look at this, it says lack of sufficient capital, poor management. Poor management is huge because unlike us, Jess, sometimes, and, and this is where we got we got to sit back and say, you know, we're, we're, we're slightly different in a lot of ways because you had the experience of being in a gaming and hospitality industry that is very sophisticated in business. Yes. I've had that same uh, I've had that same fortune. Yes. As well as, you know, couch that with being in the military and understanding yes. the discipline and mission focus and all those different And I things. grew up in a military environment right. for the first so, seventeen years of my life. So, so there you, you go. Yeah. Right? So we, we we sometimes sometimes people don't understand that we have an advantage. What they what what some most people come into this game they don't have the opportunity to understand management. They don't understand discipline. They don't understand mission focus. They don't understand people. They don't understand striking a vision. They don't understand 
planning. They don't understand the objectives of planning and, right. and the sequential meetings that help right. you stay on track. Or right. the, we talked about earlier when the green room when we were getting yeah. ready, STPs, right. systems, STPs. tools, and processes. Systems, Many people tools, are, process. are just winging right. it. They don't have the proper systems, tools, and processes right. to be successful. Right. And by the way, that's an ever-changing landscape, too. Right. When it comes to you don't just have them and then they stick. Right. You may need to evolve. You may need to change. And right. It's like... I don't know what's going to happen with this new credit card company, but I'm not feeling it. No, no. Because I don't need to have that aggravation. You don't need that. that and that's not that's not even part, that's not what you pay for. No, and that's not what you I pay for. That's not aggravation. Even, no, and I don't even want to be doing that anyway. I want to be serving my clients. I Absolutely. want to be serving their needs. Absolutely. I want to be doing the research and or looking back into my history of how I can help a client evolve, right. whether, whether it's a single one-on-one coaching client mm-hmm. or whether it's a team of a thousand or right. an audience of two thousand right right yeah you i know. don't speak to anybody in front of anybody until i understand what are your wants and needs totally and i need to build a, a plan and a program to serve those wants and needs not right. to serve me yep and, and and the thing is just unfortunately a lot of these small business owners it's it's just like this it's somebody who was a cook right and they decided I don't want to work at MGM or any other place right. again. Now I want right. my own business. Right. Um, and with there there are some things here that they avoid, right? Or or they, they fail at. Vision. Right? Yes. Vision. You've got to strike vision. the vision of you, what it looks like. Not looks today, like. Yep. but tomorrow. What tomorrow like could be tomorrow. next one year, three year, five year, ten year, twenty years. What does that look like? And you're working towards tomorrow. So when they, when they, a lot of times these small business owners don't know how to work towards tomorrow. They know how to work day to day. Absolutely. So if I'm a cook, I come in, I get my little thing together, I prep my food, I do all those types of yeah. things. So that's what I'm focused on. Yeah. What, what I've seen as a challenge with a lot of small business owners and, and, and just, just by way, you know, I, I won two SBA awards. One was small business champion of the year in 2008. Okay. I won small bu- SBA family owned business of the year in 2015. Okay. Those are, those are my proudest moments in a lot of ways. Because, Why so? Because, you, because you're recognized for a craft that 2008 small business champion, I'm helping thousands of small businesses. Okay. Helping them to help them to understand how they get cash flow through branding and marketing. Nice. Understanding that. 2015, it was in partnership with my daughter, right? So Mm -hmm. now I'm sharing it with the love, my little... But my little, what do you call it? Like, wow, you you seen her when she was a little baby, and Shine, now she's bright and up. shining light. That's and, what she is. And wow, it's amazing. It's it's a it's a great feeling. Small businesses have to understand that there are a lot of emotions that they can have that don't include money. And by the way, when you get those emotions, those are priceless. Right. No, those that's feelings true. Feelings are priceless, and the vision of the company has come to fruition. Right, right, right. No, right. that's huge. And this shows evolution. It shows evolution. Speaking of that, let's come on. Let's step back for a second. Uh, we're going to be all over the map here because I want to get this in, but this germane to what you're saying. So how long have you been in business? We've been in business now 13 years. That's pretty impressive yeah. when you look at some of the business stats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what, how have you been able to be sustainable to be in business so long like that? So, so, so what I call... How have you real, beat the odds? Real relationships. R E L. Nice. Real, real relationships. relationships. I like it. What it means is it goes beyond the basic relationship. Sure. It's 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 marrying your customers and clients. And when I say be married, you make some vows, you nice. make some convictions. You say, "Hey, you know what? We're in this war together." Nice. My clients don't look at us as vendors. They look at us as family members. I like that. It was part of the team. It's part of the team. Nice. We we never we if someone is looking at us as a vendor, we're actually firing them. You know what I like about that? There's a guy, um, God, I, I'm gonna just say it. A new client of ours that speaks to exactly what you said. Uh, it's a huge accounting firm uh, that we get to serve. Yeah. And uh, one of the partners said something to me that just blew me away. It's exactly what you just said. Says Jess, we don't see you as a vendor. Mm -hmm. We see you as, even though you're not inside the firm, we see you as one of the partners that helps us in your area of expertise where we don't have it and you do. We see you as one of the partners. Exactly. Seriously? Seriously. Seriously. He couldn't have said that if I wasn't serving his needs, if yeah. I wasn't meeting yeah. him right where he was at and then helping pull them along yeah. further where they need to be yeah. to be healthy in their company. You know, the RTC always tells me, you know what, Shondell, we rise together, we fall together. It's true. Guess what? 
that is not a vendor mentality because they are not taking all the risk on their own. Right. My brand is synonymous with their brand and we're coming at this together. Right. We have the same convictions. We have the same attitude. And the other thing, Jess, I've taught my team that it's not even about the RTC. Guess who it's about? Right. What's it's about? Their customers. Yeah. The, yeah. the people who are riding the bus, going over the crosswalks, right. sitting at a stoplight. Right. 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 Their experience matters to us. Having an experience and what that is and, that, and creating that. So that's, what so that's what you talk about when you talk about how to avoid failures in business. Number one is have that vision. Have that vision. And then hit us with number two. Well, Vill- you you said it when you said relationships. Relationships. Right? Absolutely. So my relationship with you is when I need you to convey a message or to help someone, because I can't do it all by myself. No. Right? I am, and I, they hear it differently, even right. if we say the same thing. Exactly. So when we first met, yep. you know, I first got to the Urban Chamber and I yep. said, the Urban Chamber has to hear this message. Yeah. Right? Yeah. At that time, it was, it seemed like it was about everything except how people felt, how yeah. the members feel. Yeah. Because it's about the members. It's huge. Not about board members. No. It's not about committee members. It's not about the president. That's right. It's about the members, how you make them feel. Yeah. That was the first time you and I had become friends. And that, and that, and that really helped a lot because you could feel I, that whole room was buzzing. Yeah. It was buzzing. Well, so the amazing. village, the village and the connections, mm-hmm. that's, that's establishing, growing a proper village. Building the right connections consistently is about real relationships. relationships. Yes, sir. So, and then the third thing is strategic planning. That's a lot of times people don't realize how important that is. Oh, wow. You know, we, we have a, we have a system and the system is, okay, we got a, we got a five-year plan. We have a three-year plan. We back into our annual plan and then we do things on 90 day plans. You and I are living. We never had this conversation. (laughs) Lisa and I have a long-term vision. Yeah. And I'm not going to get into it because we don't have the time. But right. the vision is crystal clear. It's oh, yeah. not just a statement. Mm-hmm. It's how we will be living and what that looks like, where we'll be living, and how we'll be serving and what that looks like. 20 years into the future, we've got that, a 10, a 5, mm-hmm. a 3, a 1, and then we do a 12-week year or 90-day plan. Yeah. And then day by day. So the vision, you strike way out there, and you strike that strategic. Our strategic mm-hmm. plan mm-hmm. is based on backwards planning from the vision. Yes. Now, we're living it forward, audibleizing right. like a quarterback at the line of scrimmage, calling a different play based on what we see the defense exactly. is doing out there. Exactly. Right? Right. Similar thing. Yeah. Because stra- strategically, you have to make the vision plain. Right? Exactly. So so we Clear when you very, say very plain. Very, clear. Yeah. Very clear to everyone, not just you. No, because if it's just me, it's just my vision. Right. When right. I sell it to all the people in the company, whether it's a company of two or 22 or 122, mm-hmm. when people understand the vision, as you go to live out that vision, it's mm-hmm. much easier for us to catch our inconsistencies and make correction yeah. without people getting their feelings hurt because it's not supporting the vision. Right. And I'll tell you, the best, the best visionary that I always talk about is Walt Disney. Oh my gosh! I just read. I just read the book like, on Walt Disney. It's amazing. He amazing. almost did not make it. Right. The banks did not want to fund him. His brother Roy did not right. was digging him and liked him. But this right. is not going to work. Right. There would be no Disneyland if he right. didn't. If he didn't have that big vision and go beyond the obstacles that were, like you said, distractions. Yeah. And you mentioned some other word. Yeah. Uh, so, so you have a lot of people who never understand your vision. There's a song on um, the Empire first season. Okay. Right. Is called Conqueror. I am a conqueror, or something like that. Okay. And they talk about um, you got a vision that no one, one, no one else sees. A lot of dirty work roll up your sleeves. Yeah. It, and they talk about nobody can see that vision. Nobody can see a swamp land turn into Disney. No. That's not what people envision naturally. Those of us that are entrepreneurial, we understand. We see things before it happens. That's why a lot of people can't dig it. That's why banks can't get with us sometimes. Right. Banks are like, no, that's not going to work. Right. They're like, are you kidding me? Right. I've already seen it work. I just came back from the future. Right. right? <laughs> I just came back. I just got, I just got back. But now you're adding another component. <laughs> you, what The component you're adding, Shondell, is belief. Yes. 
You can have a vision, yeah. but if you don't believe it, yeah. you may as well not have it. Am I wrong or not? No, you're, you're absolutely Because that last piece yeah. you just gave us, that's a belief component that's attached to the vision. Yeah. Your belief is that you have seen it and been there and done it, even if the world hasn't yet. They haven't. They, they, and they can't see it. A lot of times I spend more time telling people where we're going and saying, trust me. When you cross that mountain, you'll see exactly what I see. I love it. Right. And so businesses need to know that this is part of how to avoid some of the pitfalls and the trappings of going Absolutely. out of the business. Absolutely. The fourth one is choice and innovation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we just talked about that with Kodak. Right? Yep. Because you 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 have to understand that times will change, right? So if you're still talking about CDs and somebody's talking about an iPod, you are losing. <laughs> what right? if you what if you talk about the four track, like a right, four track right. tape? Right. Not eight track yeah. tape, but the yeah. four track. Because I started track. with a four track. Right. Like you know. Yeah. If you're still talking about a four track, you ain't gonna make it. You're not. It's not gonna happen. Because some people don't even know what a four track is. Exactly. They probably don't even know what an eight track right. is. Right. They only know what. A, like I remember mean, my dad came back from uh, uh, Thailand and he had the reel to reel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was before the four track. Right. <laughs> so you see, I, got, I was in the big, I right? was in the reel to reel too. Right. But yeah. So so you um, let me do a, do a quick departure. Because of what you just said, I want to add a couple more really quickly because I want—I don't want Kodak to be the only one out there. Right. Um, I, there's Nokia. Uh, do, which one would you like for me to profile? Nokia, Xerox, Blockbuster, Yahoo, BlackBerry. You know what Blockbuster most people know about, huh? Okay, let's, let's do it. Let me let's go to Blockbuster. Right? Let's let's check that out. Take a look at this. Why did Blockbuster fail? The video rental company was mm -hmm. at its peak in 2004. They right. survived the change from VHS to DVD. Right. What we're talking about right, right. here, right? right? Right, But failed to innovate mm -hmm. into a market that allowed for delivery much less streaming. Mm -hmm. So while Netflix was ship was shipping out DVDs to their mm -hmm. consumers right. at home, I remember right. that. Right, right. Okay. I remember that. Blockbuster figured their physical stores were enough to to please their customers because they had been the leader of the movie m a rental market for years. Right. Management didn't see why they should change their strategy. Yeah. Okay. They yeah. didn't want to innovate. All right. Back in 2000, the founder of Netflix, Reed Hastings, proposed a partnership to the former CEO of Blockbuster, John uh, Antioco. Mm -hmm. Net Netflix wanted Blockbuster to advertise their brand in the stores while Netflix would run Blockbuster online. Mm -hmm. The idea got turned down by Antioco because mm -hmm. he thought it was ridiculous Bad and that boys. Netflix's business model was niche business. Mm. Little did he know that Hastings' idea would have saved Blockbuster in 2010. Mm. Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy, and Netflix is now a $28 billion company. So going back to— 20, I got yeah. chills. Yeah. He gave up $28 billion sure. of participating yeah. revenues. And it's because of the short-sightedness— Similar to what the Apple executives had yes. back then. I read Jobs' book. I saw the movie. I said, OMG, can you imagine if they would not have re-engaged Steve Jobs? They would have gone out of business, similar to Blockbuster. And this is... Just, Netflix replaced Blockbuster because yeah, Blockbuster did not want right. to innovate. The same thing, by the way, happened with the ride shares. The ride shares did go to the... I, I, I learned this later that the ride shares did go to the cab companies and said, hey, how about we partner on these things? And, and they didn't they want to like, do it. They gave them the middle finger. Oh, wow. I got right. chills again. Well, <laughs> with that point, uh, BlackBerry, yeah. Sears, JCPenney, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tower Records, I, I, we have the stats on it. Yeah. We don't have time to read them all, but all the same thing. So yeah. point number four, choices, choices and innovation. Right. You have got to look at your choices when you're in business. So, you, so and you're not right all the time That's because you're the leader. And that's the importance of like the, the people in my office and really the importance of my daughter. Right. Because understanding that I started in the print business in 1982 or in the graphic design or even marketing communication totally different world from 82 to 2019 right, right? um and so i have a i have a young lady in my office alexis great young lady from unlv she's been teaching me so much about you know the different phases of, of social media sure you know sure and, and guess what jess in the early 2000s when i was on the american marketing association board nationally we knew that thing our industry was changing it was evolving but other people didn't want to evolve with it. People wanted to stay. No, 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 we're hanging on. Right. 
Buy a thread. Right. Guess what? Blockbuster ain't going nowhere. Right. We're the biggest, baddest on the planet. Right, right. Kodak, we ain't going nowhere. Right. People are saying now, let's take a Kodak. We are the film industry. We are the film People industry. People were saying, hey, could you Xerox that for me? Exactly. Exactly. They didn't say, could you copy that for me? Hey, could you, you go Xerox, Xerox that for me? Right. People think that Xeroxing is copying. It's not. And that was the name of a company. They're not even around anymore. And let's go back to third base. Okay. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to third base, dude. Get over, Get over yourself. yourself. The sooner, the better. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, they sir. say that the best leaders... Yeah. The best leaders get over failures faster. Yes. You will fail along the way fail. quite often. Yes. So get over yourself. Yeah, get over yourself, right? Wow. Yeah. It, it reminds, you know, it's funny is, um, who was that? Who was that? Abbott and Costello. Yes. Third base. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Who's on first? What's on first? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's so I'm good. I'm showing my age now. I'm no, no, but, but that's really good. Look it up. Abbott and Costello. Who's on first? If right. you don't know that, because that's right. a really good one. So choice and innovation is, is huge. And so we can go so, 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 yeah. late, so long and Number that. five, I guess, before we, oh, you got it. We got time coming. Yeah. Number five. Smart. And hard work. Some people think that working hard is where it's at. It's not. I think you, you, you do have to have hard work, but I think you also have to work intelligent. You have to work smart as work well. Work smarter, not harder. Yes. That is that is plastered on our wall everywhere because it goes back to systems, tools, processes. It's, I'm telling you. Work you, smarter, not harder. We live in a micro, microwave society now. Mm-hmm. Things are happening so fast. People want things so fast. How can we get at all that, yeah. Shondell, if we're not... Working smarter. We gotta work smarter, Jess. Yeah. Come on, really. The the big thing that we have to understand as people, and we have to understand as business small business owners. Listen, National Small Business Week supports your small businesses year round. You don't have to have a week to do that. Right. This is the week that we recognize small businesses. But I want to tell you, I want to tell the audience, man, the best small business owners understand a few things. They do understand STP. Right. They do understand that you have to get over yourself. Yes. And they understand without a doubt you're there to serve. If you yes, you if you do not have a service mentality, oh. you're likely not going to make it. Man. In fact, the last 18 years of Just Talk Speaking and Coaching Firm, mm-hmm. the number one thing that's kept us in business, even through some very lean times. There were times when we yeah. were making a third yeah. of our capabilities yep. uh, through some challenging times mm-hmm. of things going on outside of us. The reason why we persevered, yeah. I had a, a, a professional uh, in the county side to tell me I need to close my business and go get a job. He says, I don't know how you're doing this. Right. I refused to listen to him because I my vision was strong. Mm-hmm. It's connected to my calling. Mm-hmm. I'm doing what I'm put on this earth to do. You're and amazing. I don't care what's happening out here in this world. Yeah. That's not that's not on me. I've right. got to find a way to survive all of that. Right. So it happened several times through that 18 years. But the 18 years, the number one thing yeah. is the how you leave them feeling you concept. Them feeling, that no is, it's, it's not no about, about me. No, it's not. And it can't be because that's not why we're here. Right. I, I live by a you-focused perspective. When I get on the stage to speak to an audience, whether it's 100 or yep. 2,000, yep. like we just did in, yep. in, for Liberty Tax yep. last year as a keynote speaker, it was 2,000 people in the audience. And I wanted those 2,000 people. And it was even simulcast throughout Canada yeah. and the United States, that same keynote. I wanted the people in that audience to feel like I'm talking to you. Yeah. I'm not talking to 2,000 people. Right. I'm talking to you. Yeah. And we're, and we, and we're going to do this again, Jess, because we're going to talk about, like, on, and, and I think we, you know, we, we have our show coming in, what, in a couple weeks? Maybe yes, that'll be, on, yeah, that'll be on the 16th. Same yeah. time, yes. Same time. Look, look, guys, look, Jess and I are tackling a whole lot of different topics, a whole lot of different issues. If you want anything, anything in the interim, you can always talk to us, right? We, yes. We, we have these conversations all of the time. We do. Organically. We do. And jump on Brothers in a Conversation that Lisa created for us in Facebook. Yeah. And you can make recommendations to topics that you want to hear. Quite likely, Shondell would love oh, yeah. to pick up one of those that comes from you out there that's listening. Oh, yeah, definitely. Something you're Give interested in, us. something you heard about, something that you're the expert in. It doesn't yeah. matter. We can take it all. Yeah, we can have that dialogue. And we'll dialogue and see if we, if we can get one of those on the platform. I like that. Shondell, where can people find you? You know, people can find me in a couple of places. One is uh, some new solutions on 
SumnuSolutions.com. Okay. Um, some, that's S-U-M-N-U, SolutionsZone.com. That is the place where you can actually engage me on a different level and you can get my 12 steps of marketing. You also can interact with me 24 hours a day. Okay. So you don't have to make phone calls. You don't have to text. You can go right into the Some New Solution Zone. Nice, nice. Very good, very good. You can yeah. find uh, us at JustTalk.com, mm-hmm. uh, also Facebook and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And uh, we uh, we definitely have loved this this program, the number one reason why small businesses fail and how to avoid it. And then Shondell and I, we spun in some other areas because of other reasons. The number one reason isn't the only reason. So I'm glad that we spun mm-hmm. off of some other reasons. We gave some great examples, some some companies that you would never think would, they never thought they would lose their footing mm-hmm. in the marketing and they, they, they lost out on it. So we, we know that uh, this podcast, Brothers in Conversation, is going to serve a lot of people. Please yeah. share it. Uh, get on the Brothers in Conversation and, and, and give your comments. We're going to uh, jump on there and answer some of the thoughts that have been shared while we're on the air. Yeah, we'll connect with you. We'll engage with you. Just, definitely. If you go on social media in between the shows, we'll definitely reach back to you. Uh, I promise you, Lisa will not let us miss that. <laughs> she won't do it because that's how she rolls. That's right. That's how she rolls. That's right. So we'll close our show with just appreciation for those of you that have been watching and listening to this. This is incredible. Mm-hmm.